Welcome to Nova Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batch, and I've got a very special guest uh, joining me today, uh, Senator Kenneth Cooper Alexander. How's it going? Hey, great, Bob. How are you? Senator. Okay. Now, I was getting ready to call you Kenny. That's can, I, can I do that anyway? All of my constituents call me Kenny. There you go. i got to ask you, it's been an eventful year for you because you made a significant change. What, was it as significant as we think it was? It was going from Senate to, uh, from the House to the Senate. Uh, it was a significant change. Uh, my predecessor wa uh, was uh, e Yvonne Miller, mm -hmm. who served in the House of Delegates as well as uh, the State Senate, and also a college professor. Uh, so uh, I had some big shoes to fill, and uh, tr just trying to do the best I can to live up to her legacy and and all the work that she uh, she did in the community. So you had a special election shortly after Labor Day. Right. S it's January, so you must be going to Richmond. You've been doing it for ten years. So how different was the first day this January versus the January the year before? Uh, the expectations, uh, every, there's only uh, 40 senators. It's evenly s divided, 20 Republicans, 20 Democrats. So every vote uh, is, is, is targeted or, or scored. Uh, every budget item that you put in is significant. Uh, there, there are a lot of demands uh, for your time from constituents as well as from community action agencies as, as well as the local government because you have the 2020 split. Uh, so you can't afford to be absent, you can't afford to be late, you can't afford to be out of your seat, because one vote will make a significant difference in a public policy or budget item. Now, the level of conversation, yeah. the level of discourse, is it different? Yes, in the, in the Senate, it's a more collegial body, a more senior body. Uh, the Senate is on a four-year election uh, cycle. Uh, you don't have the turnover that you have in the House of Delegates. In the House of Delegates, every two years, you, you get a new group of legislators from around the state in the Senate uh, every four years, and the average age in the Senate is probably about 60 years old. So you're the youngster. One of the youngers. Okay. So in other words, if you were in the state, you would be sitting on this sofa wondering about how you're going to run the next time, where now you can take more of a breath and look at long term? Yeah. You can drill down deeply into public policy. Uh, you can look at trends, regularities, more research, more analytical. Uh, as you continue to look at uh, demographics, and you don't have to worry about the next election, um, education, transportation, some of the long-term uh, mm -hmm. infrastructure uh, decisions uh, can be made, and you can ha you have maybe more time to really uh, do a thorough investigation, and also propose public policy that's going to be significant and, and likely pass instead of just putting out a soundbite or just putting out a feeler. You really have an opportunity to really. Uh, put forth something that's going to be very significant for the Commonwealth of Virginia. Okay, jurisdictions you cover. When you were a state delegate, how much? Delegate, I only covered the city of Norfolk. Uh, now, Piece of cake. Uh, no, no, Norfolk, <laughs> Norfolk is very challenging, very demanding uh, because of our uh, inability to, to, to expand. Uh, you know, Norfolk has uh, a lot of demands and a lot of challenges, you know, being a, one of the older cities in the mm -hmm. Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, now I have uh, not only the city of Norfolk, but now I have part of the city of Chesapeake. One of the newest ones. One of the newest cities, 50 years old this year. Wow. So how, I mean, do you get yourself in Richmond and find that there's, there's uh, legislation that's going to be geared toward Norfolk and that being a fiscally stressed older city versus a newer one? I mean, it, well, how do you do that? There are a lot of similarities uh, in Norfolk and Chesapeake because we're, we're so interdependent. Uh, transportation, uh, education, public safety, these are some of the issues that Norfolk and Chesapeake, they both share uh, mm -hmm. very common goals and they're looking for the same outcomes as relates to congestion relief, uh, better schools, uh, uh, better you know uh, public safety uh, initiatives. So there are a lot of similarities, and there's a great relationship between the two cities. Okay. Now, because I've noticed you've mentioned constituent more than I have actually. So that you really are tuned into them. Uh, I'm a that's what keeps you going back. No, well, m more importantly, Bob, um, I'm a citizen legislator. Okay. I work. I live. I interact with the constituents. Uh, that are here. I'm, I'm one of them. Uh, unlike a professional uh, legislator where you spend your whole time in the General Assembly, mm -hmm. I'm in Richmond maybe January, February, part of March, and for the rest of those months I'm here in the community. I'm in Norfolk, I'm in Chesapeake. Uh, as a citizen uh, legislator, I, and we have what we call a, uh, a representative democracy. A true democracy, all eight million Virginians will go to the General Assembly and cast their vote. Mm -hmm. A representative democracy, you elect me as your representative. I go to Richmond, cast votes, weigh in on public policies, elect judges, uh, uh, confirm the governor's appointment to boards of visitors who are colleges and universities, but then I return back to work with the constituents 
for the next General Assembly. Got you. So the next time I see you on Granby Street, talk to you about some of that state, le state legislature. That's what you're there for, right? That's what I'm there for. Okay. Yeah. Right, it's, I know it's close to your heart. Let's talk about schools and truancy. Oh. That was really... That was your that was your big score this but year. This year was probably my my signature bill was uh, dealing with truancy. The reason, um, Bob, as I looked at uh, the truancy plan, uh, there are 134 different school boards, school divisions. Mm -hmm. um, all th 134 were doing different things as it rela related to truancy and um, chronic absenteeism. So at, it's not until you know a student is absent about five times is when a principal or his designee actually make a, a contact with the family by telephone. And all they have to say is I made an effort, a reasonable effort to get that student back in instruction. Unacceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not until maybe the sixth absence uh, that you know, they actually you know, did something that w was more aggressive. So what I did this year, you know, I said, you know, after the first absence, you know, we need some written strategies. We need to know why these students aren't in instruction. Let's get them in instruction because we know if students aren't in instruction, they're going to lag behind. They're probably going to fail, and they're probably going to drop out. Right. So let's, you know, let's hit that off by being more aggressive and getting those students back in instruction, back in school. And so that's the first bill I passed. And now we have to have written strategies right off the top. If the written strategies don't work after the sixth absence, then we bring in all the resources. We bring in the local government, community services, social services. We bring in, you know, a family assessment and planning team to drill down. Uh, and put forth an effort to get that student back in instruction. Okay, let's talk on the personal level on truancy. Because yeah. I, you know, I remember growing up. Uh, the one time I went to my mom and said, "Look, there's senior skip day. Can you write me a?" a, oh, and a yeah, it didn't yeah. go over big. Yeah. You know, and and it, you, you, if I if I didn't have a fever, I had to go to school. That's you, correct. Yeah, you're related to that, uh, right? Yeah. Is the burden on the school or is it on the parent? Well, first of all, uh, every student uh, who is school age must go to school. It's the law. It's right? the law. Every parent must send their child to school. And every school must ensure that a student who's enrolled, that they are in that classroom. So that there are responsibilities uh, that we all share. I was going to say, it doesn't sound like it's an either or. Right. And the last thing you want to do is probably get the courts involved or get the police involved. And, and that's why we're trying to make parents or guardians or those persons who are in charge of, of supervision. Uh, to make sure that they do their job, to make sure that those school-age children are there, and also uh, the students have a you know have an obligation to go to school. Mm -hmm. That skip thing, you know, you, you go out the house, <laughs> uh, and your parent think that you are in instruction, you're in school, you're not. So the students have a responsibility, and then the school has a responsibility not to wait until the last minute before uh, you know a student uh, you know has been gone six or seven days before they do something about it. And, and, and Bob, the, the interesting thing about this bill is that this planning team, this assessment team that we put in place, they must report within no later than 15 days with a plan of getting that student back in instruction. You can't delay, you can't prolong, you have 15 days to get that student back in, in instruction with all the resources and all the help, all the assistance okay. uh, and all the programs that will help that student be successful and not lag behind or fail or drop out. Because the clock is ticking no matter what. The and clock you is can't ticking. Afford, you can't afford, if you're not there, you can't learn. If a student missed one day of instruction, mm -hmm. that student lags behind. Thinking about missing six or seven or eight days, it's almost impossible for that student uh, to get back to, uh, up to speed or it's going to, you know, that student end up probably dropping out or worse, um, they may get expelled because they may act up or act out and they end up getting uh, expelled. When they're really reaching out, they're really crying for help. Uh, and so this bill, hopefully, will put the services in place very early. It's intervention. Uh, it's easier to pay uh, on this end mm -hmm. than to pay later for juvenile detention or even adult uh, corrections if that student uh, gets expelled and end up committing a crime. Every dollar that we spend in intervention, we save seven or eight dollars in juvenile justice or or, right. or human services at a later date. So this is this is preventive. Well, I know that there's that old adage of my third grade. You know how many classrooms you need to build? I'm in or prisons. Jails or prisons. That's correct. Houses. By the third grade. Yeah. Okay, I got to bring it up. What's going to happen in January? You're going to get in the car? No, you take the train. No, I wish uh, the, train, <laughs> the train doesn't go to Main Street Station yet. Uh, we're hoping that the Amtrak will go to Main Street Station. 
if, 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 if Amtrak leave, leaves Harbor Park and will go to Main Street Station, it's just a couple of blocks to the, to the General Assembly. That'll well, be a great, great. Do you know community. anybody with clout? Well, I know a few people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but come January. Yes. What's on your docket? A more, a more with education. Uh, I think that we have to uh, uh, continue to. Uh, to focus on uh, education to make to, to ensure that our kids, our students are are, are getting a world class education. I would like to revisit the SOLs. A lot of our uh, teachers and a lot of our uh, uh, administrators are complaining that they are just teaching the tests. Students should become more analytical, uh, more knowledge based learning, uh, so that they can compete for jobs uh, that are global jobs. And taking the tests, teaching to take a test. Uh, may not be the the best uh, use of our f dollars and, and the, the use of our resources. There should be assessments. We should measure. Uh, we should have goals. We should have common goals as it relates to instruction. But at the end of the day, are uh, we producing students that can compete with students students from at least 12 other countries that we're competing for against these uh, knowledge-based jobs? Uh, also, transportation. I think that we we, we cannot um, overlook the Midtown Tunnel, Downtown Tunnel, and the tolls. That, that they may have, which I think will have a negative impact on Hampton Roads. So we sh may have to revisit that whole relationship uh, as it relates to tolling those two uh, facilities. Okay, cool. Kenny, I'm looking forward to maybe having you back on after Anytime. the council agendas are put together well, for Richmond, and then we'll talk. How's that? Great, Bob. And can I say, Senator Kenny Alexander? Just Kenny Alexander's fine. That sounds good. <laughs> Thanks for joining me Bob, on the thank sofa. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us.